What's going on, Doombots? It's that time, beginning of the month, which means a new top 10 list for DSA. Now, the first list was based off of information we had from the beta. And as a player in the beta, it was very easy to see which characters were high impact both early and late game uh, to my roster. That said, things have changed. We've gotten about seven or eight new characters in the one month since this game has gone live. A couple of characters have been reworked, and what's a top 10 list if nothing changes? As far as I'm concerned, that's a pretty good sign, having a couple characters stay where they are, having a couple things throw up and down, new people showing up, that's a sign of a healthy game. So, some things haven't changed much, and as we go into the first character, uh, same as last time, number 10 on the list is in fact Simba. Now. Not much more I can say about Simba. The major point I can say of why Simba's in the top 10 is as a defensive character, as a tank, there's very few better. Uh, only one, actually. Even on his team or their respective teams, Simba is still one of the best tanks in the game based solely on his passive, gaining 4% uh, bonus defense for every 1% health missing at 50% of his health, he has 200% of his defense stat. It is very hard to kill him as he gets weaker. So you really have to do damage in one shot to him or time it well. The lower he gets, the much, much harder he is to kill. And if you can keep him taunting, either through his ability or a character like Facilier, no one's going to get through him. You're going to be able to kind of survive. That said, it's still a two-part combo at least. Uh, and the rest of the characters around him aren't that great, but he does improve the quality of any team with a taunt that comes with a heal and a couple of other unique features. So in Club War defense, he's gonna do everything he needs to do. His team or without it, he's gonna be great. And I would just, as a piece of advice, recommend anyone who does have a Lion King team, either place them on the one, two, or three nodes that protect your main base, or save them to place nodes that you need to protect as you steal other characters, towers, and club dungeon. That's pretty much it. Nothing really changed for Simba. And going into the next one, you're also going to see not much has changed. Coming in at number nine, still Ariel. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why? Well, the main reason why is because overall, Ariel's kit hasn't been overshadowed by what other people are doing. She's useful as far as an Oceanic character. Uh, she technically makes any team a little bit better with her leadership ability by making them slightly more tanky. Uh, and every part of her kit, from heal to a uh, purge on her ultimate that does a pretty decent chunk of damage, uh, as well as a basic that change based on slows, give you a lot to work with. She splashes very well on any team, and if you build teams with or around her, uh, you'll end up being okay. So as far as early game characters that hold their weight as they progress, Nothing has changed. She's still phenomenal. Maybe after a point when you've done all of the towers and you're not really worried too much, then you might have outgrown her usefulness, but that's still okay because she still will be useful in not only Club War, but in theory, whatever new game modes might be coming out, especially this month. So nothing much has changed. There's not many individual characters that do what Ariel does, and that's why she's hold on to the number nine position two months in a row. Now, last month, the number eight slot was held by Merlin. Unfortunately, Merlin has been kicked off this list. Now, it wasn't anything he did in particular. He was just the only character that didn't really break serve. The biggest downfall of Merlin, while he does have a great kit and he's probably number 11 right now, it, he's not going to help you the sooner you get him. And as a point, I'd rather not necessarily tell you what a character is going to be worth eventually on your third, fourth, or fifth team. While Merlin's kit is phenomenal, you don't need to uh, let go of some of the other characters that are a little bit higher impact than him early, and therefore he just kind of eked his way out. Now, hopefully that changes, and his necessity as a mythical character or mystical character ends up being more relevant again. His kit is truly phenomenal. He does make other characters a little bit better, but as of right now, speed is king. 
and he's not quite where he needs to be compared to some of the other characters on this team, so he's been removed. Uh, that said, his space has been taken over, um, but not by the character who's been added to the list. Instead, it's been taken over by the previous number seven. Number eight is now Dr. Facilier. Now, Dr. Facilier uh, hasn't really changed. He just dropped a little bit because someone overtook him. He still is one of the best early game characters. He's necessary for so many different events. He can help your team uh, progress not only the downtown villains, but any team. And if you can use him on the team, he gives them a little bit of extra survivability, both with his passive as well as his ability to stun a character and choose a taunt. Uh, a lot of times if you use summoned spell minions like trigger or bucket of soldiers you can go ahead and put a taunt on that this way they can kill something that you can resummon whenever you want ends up being pretty strong uh facilier is one of those characters where the earlier you get him the better he is and he never quite falls off he's really for pve content though he falls off a little bit when it comes to pvp at least without using a full downtown villains team or more specifically when you're up against very very completed teams uh, in the end game where people are starting to hedge a little with characters like Judy Hops or Anger. Once you're going that deep to try to counter a specific setup, you end up uh, in a pretty weird place anyway. But as of right now, you can do a lot worse than unlocking Facilier as soon as you can. Uh, and the second you can farm him, get him up to seven as fast as possible. Overall, still phenomenal character, even though he is currently at number eight. So moving to number seven another slight change uh, nothing crazy but uh some things have been moved around uh, this character was previously in the top five not so much anymore the brand new number seven character this month for may is more due now he again has not gotten worse it's his necessity hasn't been that important now many people will recognize him as a wilds character that you can use for some of the towers and that is true but again he's very hard to farm he's only available in one store and while he is absolutely no questions asked the best tank in the game have you noticed that there's not much content you desperately need a tank for that's kind of how it goes with Mordu. Now, he will be useful in certain PvP arena and sorcerer's uh, tournament defenses for a long time. When there wasn't enough damage or synergy around there, people just used very tanky defensive characters, and he still has a lot of value there. That said, uh, he gets outscaled quickly by the amount of damage and speed some of the other characters use, and as a person who's now used Mordu uh, and invested a little bit more into him i can say that while he is an absolutely decent damage dealer and one of the best tanks in any game let alone this game he isn't as necessary for the end of the game and you don't really feel much growth when you unlock him if that makes sense so great character you won't regret having him but probably not one of the highest priority unlocks in the game if you get lucky and pull him out of an ultimate orb or something like that have no problems there but for right now, he's holding a pretty decent spot, and you could do a lot worse than unlocking Mordu. Moving to number six, we have probably one of our biggest drops. Mordu dropped a couple of spots, but this character dropped quite a bit. Again, not necessarily because he's not good, just he's been replaced, and the meta has kind of shifted around. Uh, and that character, coming in at number six, just below the top five, is Aladdin. Again, nothing really bad happened to Aladdin. He's still just as good as he ever was. But as time progresses and more characters come out, uh, not only do new characters become better than what exists, but they somewhat improve the quality of what other characters can do. And because of that, Aladdin, while still absolutely necessary for the Kingdom team and one of the best early game characters for you to work on, still top 10 among the 60 plus characters in the game he doesn't really fall into the top five category anymore he will pretty much be a reliable damage dealer that's very difficult to kill for as long as you have him uh, he will contribute for his kingdom team as well as for the aladdin team 
uh, you will get your value out of Aladdin for a really long time. Feel free to use him until you can't anymore. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, he just kind of fell off when a new character was introduced that slightly shifted a little bit more of what the meta is going to look like going forward. And then next month, we might even see more things. Some might make him stronger. We'll find out. But unfortunately, Aladdin got kicked out of the top five. That does mean, though, that some of the previous characters that were just outside of the top five have been upgraded. So real quick, if you haven't checked out last month's video, I'll leave a link right up here so you can kind of see where it was last month and how things have changed before we enter the top five. Uh, coming in at number five, fifth best character in this game, for my money anyway, is is Hades. Now, you may be wondering why Hades fell a little from last week, and that's simple. You probably have noticed a lot of people with a Hades very early unlock, and you're wiping the floor with them. He doesn't quite perform at the early stages of the game uh, that some of the other characters do. That said, when you're talking about end game AoE damage, you just truly can't get better than Hades. Everything he does hits multiple people. He hits relatively hard, and he's one of those characters that the longer he stays in the field, the more of a threat it becomes. That said, if you can't immediately take him out, he actually gets stronger. As an end game character or one of the uh, last characters to work on, he really does finalize the team. That said, it's really hard to explain why Hades doesn't work until you've either made the mistake of getting him early, used him for a little bit, and then realized that he's very squishy, he doesn't really scale that well, and he's not better than some of the other options like Shan Yu, or even to some extent Mordu. But he is the uh, the capstone on your team. So as you've progressed, my recommendation still stands. Farm specifically Shan Yu uh, until you're finished six or seven star. That's up to you based on how much you're willing to spend or how impatient you are. And then swap over to Hades, get him again to six or seven star, maybe deciding which one to swap between. But unlocking a character does not matter in this game. I cannot stress that enough. It's not who you can unlock. It's who you can finish. And until Hades is finished... You're probably not getting much value out of him. That said, no one messes with his damage numbers at the end of the game. So as you prioritize him, as you're moving from the middle of the game to the end game, uh, you're going to do pretty well with Hades. Hard number five. So if Hades is number five and he was number four, who took over number four? Well, it's probably the person who we haven't talked about on this list yet. And uh, yeah because of the change of how the game works. Number four on this list is Emperor Zerg. Now, Emperor Zerg is a little bit harder to get than most characters. That does not mean he's not one of the top characters in the game. And in addition, you can get him out of an uh, ultimate chest completely randomly as an 80 shard unlock. So he is harder to get. That said, when you work on your downtown villains for uh, all of the reasons you should be working on your downtown villains. A reward for doing so is getting one of the best single target damage dealers in the game, if not the best single target damage dealer in the game. Zerg absolutely positively destroys opponents. He has very low hit points as far as uh, those characters are concerned, and you'll notice it as you start facing off against people that are not only uh, a little bit higher than you, but once you reach a parity point where everyone is max level or everyone has gear tier five six characters maybe even seven you'll start noticing oh wait a minute zerg uh doesn't have the hit points he does but because of the way the meta has somewhat shifted the amount of early damage that is possible in the early game means zerg's uh almost always going to be able to take one character out when he takes a turn and maybe even a second just from how uh, the meta has shifted. You can kind of make a lot of content trivial by using Zerg. He still is a great character in the Toy Story team. Even though that team is not phenomenal, he kind of carries it. He's a great character in random mishmash PvP teams. He's almost uh, a separate character completely when you're looking at Sorceress Tournament. It's almost like a separation of who has Zerg and who doesn't for the most part. But 
you can't really control whether you get him unless you're planning for him. It doesn't make a difference. He's number four on the list, easily. Top five character, and I put him at number four. I think there's a couple that are just a little bit more valuable than him, and as we see why, we'll go into number three. Number three, making his debut into the top ten list, and into all of our hearts as quickly as he can, is Dash. Now, Dash is not farmable. Dash is only available in an event. Dash is a character you have to spend money on. This is correct. All of the things you've just said in your brain, to me, in my brain, are 100% accurate. Dash is the best character that's come out this month. No question. Dash is one of the best all-around kits in the game. Uh, and what Dash has done for the meta is completely disrupt what most teams are capable of doing by adding an incredibly quick uh, single target damage dealer with a huge burst attack and some built-in survivability. He basically took Aladdin's spot in that Aladdin also was a pretty good single target damage dealer that had a little bit of survivability through evasion. Uh, Dash does the same thing, just a thousand times better and way more quicker, and he doesn't need Shan Yu to give him the speed boost. He's already faster than Shan Yu. So uh, if you were lucky enough to get Dash on this pass, whether it was from spending money or anything else, congratulations. Feel no regret in investing in him. Uh, I've already done a couple reviews on the characters. While the Incredibles team is a little bit lackluster, and you might be noticing teams in this game are a little bit lackluster right now, at least because there's not a game mode specifically catered to that. Uh, Sorcerer's Tournament and PvP Arena uh, aside, the only game mode that really takes advantage of full teams is Club Conquest, and we really haven't had many Club Conquests. Can't imagine why. So. When you look at Dash and you take a quick look at his kit, the most important thing, and I don't ever recommend doing this normally, is look at some of the numbers my Dash has, and he's nowhere near done. Six star, gear tier five, 970 offense, 122 speed, no health, absolutely no health, none. He has no health at all. Crit power, 150, he is, Insane. You can use him with uh, Elastigirl to give him a little bit extra crit chance. You could just plop him down on whatever the current arena team you're using, and he will be a single target damage dealer. One of the beautiful things about his kit is his special of Heads Up does comparable damage to Zerg's special. Not exactly the same, but comparable, and each one has a chance to crit, uh, as well as his ultimate attack, the dash, uh, is somewhat similar to characters like BBW or Hades in that it really does a lot of damage to a lot of different characters. His built-in survivability from his passive, increasing his own speed bar, making him take extra turns and every time he crits or evades, it, absolutely monstrous kit, independent of his team, one of the best characters in the game right now, or at least for my money, the third best character. That said, you'll notice that the top two haven't been mentioned yet, so they probably didn't move, and you're right. Uh, number two, for the second month in a row, is the BB Dubs. I understand that a lot of people don't think BBW matters as much as I do. Uh, they're wrong, and they should feel bad about that. I would take BBW over Mordu any day, for one reason and one reason alone. BBW will murder any hero that he comes across. He is an equal mix of good AoE damage and good single target damage with an execute on basic, real quick. He hits hard. He hits often. He does AoE. Everything about what he does is reliable, ignoring the fact that he's easy to farm, necessary to progress in certain game modes, and immediately impacts your roster more than many other characters in this game. More than pretty much all but one character in this game, if my math is right. BBW, Big Bad Wolf, cannot uh, be underestimated. You will have almost no regrets if you he was, if he's the first character you seven star If he's the first character you bring up to gear tier seven I promise you're not gonna regret it that aoe hurts a lot And if you happen to run into someone running a full heroes team You're never gonna regret what you've done to him so far 
So not much else to say there. And of course, we get to lead into number one, two months running, Shan Yu. Uh, nothing else to say. He is the best. Why is he the best? Why is he? He doesn't do as much damage as Zerg. Why is he better than Zerg? He doesn't do as much damage as Hades. Why is he better than Hades? Well, there is no character in the game that improves your quality of life in gameplay more than Shan Yu. Anywhere, if Shan Yu is available for the game, you put Shan Yu in that game. That's it. If you're doing a PvP arena fight and you don't have Shan Yu, doesn't matter who the other characters are, doesn't matter if they're Kingdom doesn't matter Sean Yu does all the work Sean Yu is quick Sean Yu hits really hard it's pretty pretty tanky relative to a, an offensive character not more so than a tank but he already has about 2,000 more health than dash obviously huge offense line good speed with an 8% increase when he, his passive is running crit chance through the roof every time he has a great setup and on top of it still no mention kingdom team is one of the best teams in the game uh, until you're starting to get cherry picky uh, and for that reason uh very simply the top five characters on this list i also equate to the strongest pvp arena slash sorcerers tournament team you can actually put together and that's with a couple of exceptions if you do happen to have an absolutely perfect onward team uh, of those three characters you might not necessarily need too much more than them but you get five slots and uh, i think you could do a lot worse than putting sean Yu and bbw on that team or kind of filling out with whomever else you need uh, other than that can't really say anything else about Sean Yu. He's gotten the title of best in the game two months in a row. Hopefully, we see a little bit of a shakeup next month. Maybe a previously okay character on the list gets jumped up to number one because of a rework. Maybe a brand new character does, or maybe it stays the same. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Comment below and let me know what you disagree with so I can promptly ignore it. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Hopefully you guys do get help from this video. Hopefully this gives you an idea of which of these characters uh, are worth investing in towards the end game to help you progress as well as um, which characters that aren't on this list that you might want to wait until you're more uh, well developed as a player. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli and I'll catch you later.